of a pulpit to speak to us today. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good to be back home. I, um, uh, I, what, I, what I preach is I just want to help the pastor out because he preaches, he's been preaching a long time, so I, I just think that I should, um, you know, the Lord lays on my heart just to give him a break because he has been doing it a long time and, you know, I, and where I, we, we are at the moment, there is a little church in there where we help out. It's, very, it's, it's only a small church. It's only the size of the back room there. So there's only a handful of people in there. So I help out there because there's no pastor there. So the, one of the men that's there, he, he preaches and then sometimes they just do Bible studies. But when I'm there, I, I try and preach. But look, I'm not, I, I don't think... I'm a, I, I struggle sometimes, you know, about preaching and that. And, but, you know, that's what the Lord wants me to do. So I need to, at least if I'm starting in a little church and, you know, starting here and starting in a little church, that's where the Lord can, um, he can build me up like, and things like that. So, and that little church is, you know, we have, we get there and we sort of, missed, you know, <laughs> nothing sort of really organised there, right, Kirsty? So, so we, so... You know, th- these things happen in churches, unfortunately. And what I mainly wanted to do, because just, I just wanted to share with you is first, because, you know, we've left here and, you know, this is my home. Darwin's my home. And when I come back here, you know, my coffin's going to be in this church here. So this is my home, you know what I mean? But I'm, I'm waiting to go to home up to, you know, back to, you know, where a real home is in heaven. But the Lord has, um, you know, he, he's taken us away from here because... You know, because I was doing the prison with the with Wendy, you know. Now I hear that Vargas is not doing it anymore. I um, it's a bit hard because I bumped into Wendy yesterday, but um, and you know, there's no one to go into the prison with her. So I feel like the Lord has taken me. But 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 it's amazing what God does. Like for for some reason he he's taken us down there and he's taken us like because where I I grew up and down I'm urbanised. You know what I mean? I like to have neighbours and that with me. But where we are. We're out and on a farm, and we're 20 k's out of town. So God has put us out there, and, and I think I think sometimes He needs to take me away from things because this is my home and down. But people lo- know what my former life was like, so I think that sometimes that it, it's better if I'm taken out of here, so and then I can learn to gr- grow down there, and people re- will probably accept me when I come back. You know what I mean? But I don't know. That's that's God's plans, but. Look, I went down there, I left here, I had a, look, I had a good job. I used to drive the buses, but I got, I, I got, I got pushed into the office, so I was working in an office, working from, you know, eight till five, so I had an office job there, and it was great. And then we decided to, the Lord laid it on our hearts to go down to West Australia, because I don't know if you know my, we've got grandchildren down there, and most of you know that Samara, Tess and Cindy, they're down there. So we're so grateful because we're on one farm and they're on farms not far away because their father actually lives further down at, Co- at Kojanup, three hours away. But we're there and what it mainly is for the grandchildren. So when we get the chance, we take them to church because it's so important. You know, what, they, what they're doing, to, they try, the t- children need to, be, need to be taught that thing early so they know that in further in life that they, they, got, they know there is a God because there's so much breaking down of God in, in society, isn't there? So God has taken us down there and we take our grandchildren. We've got four now. And when we get back, there'll be another... Tess is just about ready to... She's big as. So she's, <laughs> she's going to have a baby. And then Cindy, the youngest one of the, the girls, she, she's four months pregnant. So she's starting to have children. So hopefully... When they, because we're down there for the grandchildren, and once you know Tabitha starts having children, no doubt we'll come back here because mother will want to be with 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 with, with her with, with the grandchildren. So that's why we've gone down there. You know what I mean? Because those children need to know. Because that church we go to, there's only it's only a small church, but there are mainly old people in there. You know what I mean? They're old, and there is one young family, and 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 they've got two children there. But and 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 that's it. Now, and the whole farming community there, they. You know, hardly that any of them go to church, even though, you know, you know, God has blessed them in so many ways down there. 
but they've got that much rain, it's, it's going to be a bumper crop this year. But that's the reason, you know, and look, I went down there and I've gone to a farming area, to, to a wheat belt. I know nothing about wheat, I know nothing about farming. And God has, and being indigenous, I've, I went down there and I got a job, firstly, I, I got a job at the school working there too, and they said, you want to be a cleaner? Well, I, I got cleaning in my blood because my grandmother and mother were cleaners. So I know how to clean. And I had, because of this COVID, I had to get to work early and like winter down there, it's cold. Like I'm getting to work at seven o'clock and it's still dark and it's freezing cold. Like, you know, I've got frost on my windscreen. So I get to work and then I have to wipe. We go in there and we have to, at the school, we have to wipe everything down. Wiping things down day in and day in, And then I've got to get out in the playground with a, with a big cobweb broom and I've got to wipe all the play equipment down. This is every day. And like, it's the most, it's the most horrible job that I've had, you know what I mean? And then, and then I had to do gardening, but that's what God... God wanted me there and because all the children there, they all knew me. You know, they all know me and, and b- being an indigenous person, indigenous man, I, I stand out. You know, I stand out because there's not many Aboriginal people down there. But I stand out in, in the crowd down there you know, especially, and around the school there. Because, and it was good because the grandkids were there and they'd see me because the grandkids, they call me, it's a Larrakia word, they call me Owo. Because cause what happened when, when once Tabitha starts having children, all the kids will just call me one name, even though they're non-indigenous and they're not my, you know, I'm not, you know, they're not my blood or anything. But because I just want them to have that all that one, that they can all call me the one name, and and, and that's Owe, which is the Larrakee word for grandfather. G- Judith knows that, so and uh, R- 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 Rachel would know that. So that's why I'm called. And all the kids you hear the kids say to to, to Adele and Blake. Hey, there's Owo. So, <laughs> so I'm quite well known down there, in, 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 you know, at the um, at the school in there. But I was there for one third term, and then Billy, uh, 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 Tessa's partner, he got promoted in his job. So there was a position there as a as a truck driver, or work on the gang truck. Now, I was a bus driver up here, and I went down there expecting to be to be a. I wanted to be a bus driver. Now. And I was looking. At, I was going to work out on out on the mines. Um, uh, yeah, and, and 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 work as a bus driver down there at, at one of the mines. But because we're on a farm, I didn't want to leave Kirsty out on the farm by herself. So I just hung in there, and then um, and this job came up. So um, Billy said, "Get your truck license." So I'd never been. I'd never driven trucks before. I haven't driven smaller trucks, but this is a big truck. And I managed to get my license, and I got this job as a, as a gang truck driver. And, like, we cart machinery around, so I had to get all these licenses for driving a f- uh, front-end loader. I can drive a front-end loader. I can drive a, um, a, a bobcat and all the other big machinery. So w- we have to pick up this machine. I have to drive, the fork, I have to drive this big loader onto, on, onto a flatbed truck, and it's pretty, it's pretty scary. And, and there's big... Um, uh, grain loaders that, that we have to load up and, and, and they're nearly as big as the, on the trailer that we have to drive it up there and it's only, they're so wide you can't see the, the edge of the truck but these things I've, you know, God has used me down there and I never, it's something that I, I never would have ever dreamed of or thought of because at, that, at the wheat, CBH, the wheat belt there there's no indigenous persons there I'm the only indigenous one there so God has used me as, a, as to, to be a witness so, and I have shared with the um, with people down there that I've worked with, and it's and you know you know they know I'm a Christian, but it, it, you know it's amazing what God does because when when we do drive around because sometimes I can drive into Perth which is about two three hours away, but we can do up to 200 kilometres a day in the truck, dropping off, picking up, and 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 God has put me in this because I'm climbing up and down a truck every day, and and the machinery has to be secured. So you've got a 20 ton um, loader going onto a truck. It has to be chained down. So I have to lift the chains and then we hook the chains up and I'm doing physical work every day, climbing in and out of trucks. So, you know, you know, God has provided this work for me and, and it's difficult. So it's, it's something I've never done before. And I've had to learn about grain. So, you know, all the different grains and, and all this stuff. So it, it's interesting, but, you know, God, he... he he does know what is best for us. 
you know, we might make plans and that, but, you know, God knows what's best for us. And, and, and if it's putting us through these trials, that, you know, that can make us a better person. And, and especially for, for, for me and that. But we've certainly been blessed because on that farm there, we only pay $100 a week. It's amazing. And we can use all the water we want because um, they've got a bore there and, and we've got that much water we can... Like the people living there before, they had the whole thing irrigated. So there's water there for us. So, and we don't have to pay for power. So, you know, how good is that? So, you know, God has blessed us in that many ways. And, in the, and one thing because... I'll, I'll, I'll share a myth. I'll, I'll, I'll read a verse later and I'll share something with you later. But I just wanted to just fill you in because, you know, you don't know what... When it, what uh, I haven't been on Facebook. I've been on Facebook a little bit, but I just wanted to share with you is because w- where we live, I like birds because I used to be a tour guy. I, I'm a bird watcher. And God is amazing because, like, I want to see pretty birds and that, but you know what we get every day singing out? No, I don't call them crows. I call them ravens. And we got a pair of ravens there and I start feeding them every morning. So, you know, and, but, and I look at them and I watch them and they're, and they're quite smart birds. Because when you go, the, when you go to the Bible, and, and that takes me straight back to the Bible, what was the first thing that God set from the ark, um, Noah sent from the ark? That was a raven. He sent the raven out first and then the dove later but the raven went first and what would Elijah what did what fed Elijah when he took when he was out in the wilderness it was a raven now you wouldn't think like if I was out there I'd say what, what the, a pelican bring some fish or something but but a raven is a scavenger but God fed Elijah he, he used the raven to feed him so so I think, well, that's great. You know, it's a blessing to have these ravens there. And our little dog starts, we got a little dog there now, and, he's, and, 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 and he starts, uh, the ravens te- tease him because I put my, the, the raven food up on a stand and the little dog can't reach up there, but the ravens sit up there and they sort of taunt him in that. And they fly low along the ground, they land, and he chases them. So we get, we get fun out of watching that. And look, in the garden there, olives. We've got olives We've got two olive trees and Kirsty processed it. Tell them to take you. Six weeks to, process, to think the olive. Now we've got jars of olives. And you know what olives are about? We just, we just had the communion. There. Where was Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane? What was, what, what was it? It was an olive grove in there. And we've had the olives there and we've also got figs. And you know, we know about figs in that. So it's been, God's been great. And there's, there's a little, what's the other little tree? Yeah, the apricots, but the, um, the, um, the almonds. Now, did you know in the almonds, I, I, if, I'll, just, I'll just share you something here about, about the almonds. I just, I just took, found some information about almonds and that and thinking um, God used almonds. I had it written down here. I did write it down. So I started, I'm starting to write things down now. Like I'm, because I'm pretty, I, I think I can try and remember stuff, but it just, um, yeah, I, I, God sort of, sort of teaching me something there. So I'll find it here about the almonds, and and, and then I'll get onto my main message. But um, I'll find it here somewhere. I know. Um, oh, need to get my paperwork in order. Um, almonds. Uh, where was? In I've written it down somewhere. Oh, hang on, a bit further up here. Okay, um, just you know, as I was talking about the ravens, that you know, it was you know, I had the ravens, all the birds and that, but um, the other trees, but almond trees. Now Jacob took for himself rods of green poplar and the almond in Genesis 37. And what happened? They were just um, sticks there, but God actually. When they plant, the, the, in Genesis 43, 11, Aaron's rod produced almonds. So you can see how God works. So, you know, he, he, can, make, he, can, he can do the impossible and make it possible. So just thought I'd just share that with you with, about almonds and that. So, um, yeah, so 
and fig trees, you know, we know about the Bible, about fig trees that covering the nakedness, in Genesis 3, 7, and used for healing and sometimes fruit. But look, you know, God has been good to us. And like, we went down there and uh, Kirsty plays in the church. Now, Kirsty's old piano, we, she had it for 50 years before Cyclone Tracy. It, it lasted Cyclone Tracy and, and it lasted 50 years and we actually gave it away to one of her students. But we went down there without a piano. Kirsty's got an electric one. But our, um, Kirsty's old, oldest daughter, Samara, their families, they got old pianos. And guess what? Because they knew Kirsty was a piano player, they gave, us, they gave Kirsty the beautiful old piano. Now, there was two pianos. So her daughter, uh, uh, Samara, the oldest girl, she took a piano and it's, it, and it's better looking. But the one that Kirsty got, it's a beautiful old piano, but it plays better. So we've been, you know, God has blessed us. And, and, and Kirsty plays in the church and they love it when she plays in the church there. As you know, as you do, you can, you know, she's been playing that long here. But look, you know, God has been good. And, and like with, the, with my work, because I travel around the, the wheat belt and that, think the last time I was here, I, I, I shared with you about Noah's flood. Now, down in the wheat belt, like across from our house, we walked 400 meters and there's Gorge Rock. It's a, um, it's, um, well, just think what the material is made of now. Um, just slipped my mind. Think, just talking about. But you, but all these um, all these you got Gorge Rock, and then if we got another like in the whole wheat belt, there's nearly a look. I can count about twenty that I see. There are these um, are, are these rocks: Gorge Rock, Corrigan Rock, Bruce Rock, Kirk Rock, Sewell Rock, Gillikin Rock, um, Wave Rock. Now. Wave rock is, it's a, it's a big wave rock and, and the Aboriginal people believe that the, that the serpent created it. But we know better, you know, that it was, um, you know, I believe all that rock there is, they've been exposed after Noah's flood. When Noah's flood comes through, all those rocks were, were exposed in the area. So it, it, it's a good teaching, it's a good learning curve for me, but like I thought, went down there and thought, this farming area is just, um, just boring and, you know, what am I going to do down here? But, you know, God has showed us a lot and showing us a lot, well, what I want to share with you is that. I'll, I'll, I'll read the verse here. And, and this is, um, you know, maybe you can help me because this could be, because I'm actually going to talk about, uh, about the Aboriginal flag. So I'll, I'll read a verse here and then maybe you can help me. And, you know, like I said, I don't, I'm not really a preacher, but I, I like to look up things. And I'm just going to read in here, and and you can you can see where I'm, hopefully I'm coming from, and I can just here yeah, in get your Bibles and, and read this so you can help me too. In in, in Deuteronomy, now what am I, what, what I'm going to preach about is that when we go to the areas down there, they're starting to do. Um, we drive to one area that's about an hour's drive from Corrie, and and what I started seeing in the distance was these big turbines. You all know the big power turbines? And then when we come close to the area, there's just solar panels. Solar panels everywhere. And I'm thinking, what made me think that is that Australia, and I'll, I'll read this verse here first. You can, so you can, then you can see where I'm sort of coming from. Deuteronomy 4.19. They read it there, and I'll read a couple of verses here. Deuteronomy 4.19. Idolatry forbidden. And when you look up to the sky and see the sun, the moon and the stars and all the heavenly array, do not be enticed into bowing down to them or worshipping things the Lord your God has appointed to all the nations under heaven. And then if we go to Deuteronomy 17, let's read a bit more. Deuteronomy 17, 3, 2. Bowing down to them, now, on the contrary, to my command, has worshipped other gods, bowing down to them or to the sun or the moon or the stars in the sky. And then I'll just go into Second Kings. Because I actually shared this with the church down there. But hopefully, you know, you mob can probably help me a bit more here because I feel that I'm going to be able to share this, share this later with, 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 with other people. But... 
good to come to the church here and get help here. So 23, 2 Kings 23, 5. Is it 20, yeah, 2 Kings 23, 5. He did away with the idolatry. This is talking about Josiah, King Josiah. He said, and Josiah did away with all the, I might as well read it first. Then the king called all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. He went up to the temple of the Lord with the people of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and the priests and the prophets. All the people from the least to the greatest, he read in their hearing the, all the words of the book of the covenant, which he had been found in the temple of the Lord. The king stood by the pillar, renew the covenant in the presence of the Lord to follow the Lord, to keep his commands, statutes and decrees with all his heart and all his soul, thus confirming the words of the covenant written in this book. Then all the people pledged themselves to the covenant. The king ordered Hilkiah the priest, the priest next, next in rank, the doorkeepers to remove from the temples of the Lord all the articles made for Baal, Asherah and all the starry hosts. And and he, and he did away with all the... He burnt them outside Jerusalem in the fields of Kidron Valley and he took the ashes to Bethlehem. He did away with the idolatrous priests appointed by the kings of Judah to burn incense on the place, high places, the towns of Judah and those around Jerusalem, the those who burnt incense to Baal, to the sun, to the moon, to the constellations and the starry host. Now what I'm, what I'm actually getting at, so you can see there's... This is about worshipping. And, and, and worshipping the sun. Now what, what, what am I getting at? Because we're starting to worship. We're start, there's an Aboriginal flag. Now, does anybody understand what, what the meaning of the Aboriginal flag, what, what the colours are? Okay, with the Aboriginal flag. With the red ochre, you've got the red, the black and the yellow. Now, you've got, you've got the red ochre, the colour of the earth. It's the... Um, it, it represents the red earth for the red ochre used in ceremonies, the Aboriginal people's spiritual relation to the land. And the, yellow, and the, the black represents the Aboriginal people of Australia. And the yellow circle represents the sun, the giver of life, a protector. Now, that seems to be, Australia seems to be, because, because we're flying the flag and, and, and like, they fly it everywhere. And a few years ago, the anti-CSA asked me, they, should, they came and talked to me, they got me to come there and talk to them about the Aboriginal flag. I said, you shouldn't be flying the Aboriginal flag at a, at a Christian school. Because what that's teaching children is that you worship the sun. You worship the sun that God created. Now, now God, in his wisdom... Did he, what day did he create the sun? On the fourth day. Didn't he? He said, let there be light. He was the light. Then on the fourth day he creates the sun so that we don't fall into the worship of the sun because the Egyptians, the, the Israelites were in captivity for what, four, 400 years? So they would have known what the Egyptians were worshipping. And there was the Ra, the Egyptian sun god. In, 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 in Egyptian mythology, Ra was the god of the sun. He was the most important god in ancient Egypt. He had many names such as Amun-Ra and Ra Horakathi. It was said he was born each morning in the east and died each night in the west. All forms of life was believed to have been created by Ra. In some accounts, humans were created from Ra's tears and sweat, hence the Egyptians called themselves the cattle of Ra. Now, cattle of Ra, so the Israelites knew what the Egyptians called themselves, the cattle of Ra. So when Moses went up onto the mountain... What did they get Aaron to do? Didn't he build an idol for them? What was it in the shape of? It was a golden calf. So the, so the Israelites 
knew what the Egyptians were worshipping, and the first thing they would have worshipped was that calf. So they could see, and this is where they were drifting away from, you know, they, this is where they, can get, they drifted away from God. They started worshipping, worshipping, you know, started, God hates that, doesn't he? Because what's the uh, first, in the, um, you know, when he gave them the Ten Commandments, he says, you know, worship me and have no other gods. He didn't want them worshipping other things. Now, what I'm getting at is that for, for here in Australia, with this day and age now, with this, you know, with this uh, renewable energy, are we worshipping the sun when we put up the solar panels and everything? Are we teaching that the sun gives life to everything? Because as a country, we have been blessed with coal and uranium. But they tell you that it's, it's, it, it, you know, it, it, it's not good for the environment. But what does God say? So if we're going to be, keep going solar, does that mean we're worshipping the sun? I don't know. What, what are you mob reckon? Are we worshipping the sun when we go solar? Because isn't, I believe that it is more expensive to go solar because we vote people in government and if, and if we got all the uranium and coal there, wouldn't it be cheaper for us if the government kept using the solar, the, the, the um to, to, to use the coal and, and the uranium? Wouldn't it be cheaper? And, and that's what I believe, because we have been blessed. God has blessed us with coal and uranium, so why don't we use it? But what do we do? We ex, you know, there used to be an ad back in the, you know, you know, back through the 80s, export and grow. So why don't, you know, we, we are... Look, the only way this economy is still going all right because we, you know, we've been exporting stuff, especially coal to China. You know, we're getting our money back from China. But that's what's keeping this country going, all the exports we do. But what, are we, cause what I'm saying is that we're actually importing. We're importing all these solar panels now. I had a, one of the blokes at the church, he, he, he came up and said to me, he said, um, um, you know, what does it say in the Bible that, you know, that we shouldn't use solar in that. And, and I said it, I, I, I shared with him about, especially about, what, about worshipping the, what, what things that God created. Even though the sun is good, but I believe that we are the only country that's, that's going solar. And we should be going, using something that's, that's readily available to us. And you know, why don't we stick with coal and why don't we stick with uranium? You know, they were just... With uranium, like, I don't think, you know, the uh, pastor was telling me about Sheila. You all know that Sheila was in the hospital and she, they found out that, that, that she had a health problem there and it was done through x-rays. Now, Aboriginal people are not, you know, their mob don't tell, you know how they close that, the, the mine at Ranger, their Jabiru. That, that was a uranium mine. Now, you know, the Aboriginal people have been told that, that it, you know, uranium's dangerous and it lasts millions of years now. Uh, the follower at the church the, last, the other week, I said to him, he, he said, because he, he, he was questioning me about, what about, about you know, why we shouldn't um, use, why we shouldn't use um, solar panels and that. Because um, what I said to him was that w with solar panels, the, um, no, sorry, sorry, just get back to Sheila. With, with the uranium, Aboriginal people need to know that uranium, it helps us in, they use it for x-rays. Now, if it was dangerous, why has Australia got its own one nuclear facility in our biggest city at, at Lucas Heights? Now, it's been there for over 40 years. So, why do they think people think uranium is dangerous? But they want, I, I believe that they want us to worship the, you know, like people that want to make, make a one world government, they especially want to bring, I believe that they want to bring Australia down and make us worship, use the sun so that we buy the uranium, the, the, um, buy the solar panels now. With the solar panels, 
I said to the fellow the other week, I said, look, if they make them in China, they're going to make them cheap and nasty, just like their great walls. So the more, the cheaper they make them, the more they break down quicker, the more you have to buy it. Okay, that's only just my thinking. I could be wrong, but I believe that if I was a businessman, I wanted to make money, well, I'll sell to stupid Australians solar panels so that you buy them and then you've got to buy the battery. But if the solar panels don't last that long, they've got to be dumped somewhere. Now, isn't that more of a problem? Because they can't recycle solar panels. So we are going to have a big solar pa panel dump here in Australia. And I believe that's, you know, that's wrong, that. And I believe that our government should be providing cheap, you know, uh, a cheaper power for us. Because if the Australian government um, bringing 200,000 people a year in here, the population is going to go up. Renewables is not going to keep up with demand. They're not going to be able to supply power with that demand. Only thing that can do it is either nuclear or uranium. But oh, look, I could be wrong. But I believe that, um, that like I said, I don't know if, I, if, if I'm right or wrong on that. I could be, you know, I could be barking up the wrong tree. But I, I believe that Australians should be using what, what uh, God has blessed us with. And with the, um, w w with the country being in so much debt, we need to we need to recoup our costs and, and our Prime Minister, I pray for him that he will realise that he will not be persuaded by the greenies because that's what they're pushing, ain't they? We need to save the planet. But isn't God in control? Isn't God in control? Are we making the earth warmer? Are the sea levels rising? The sea levels ain't rising. But, you know, you, you do his... You do hear stories about people in the Pacific, you know, some of those people saying that the sea levels are rising. Well, of course he's going to say the sea levels are rising if, if, you know, if someone is giving him money. You can corrupt people with money in that, and I feel that that's what's happening, but the sea levels have not risen. You know, I've lived in Darwin, lived in all, all my life. I'm a saltwater man. I haven't seen the tides come up any higher here. You know, the sea levels haven't risen. So why would God allow that? Doesn't he say that in the Bible that he will, in, um, that he put a barrier there so the tide only comes up so far? It's not going to flood the earth. He's done one flood, that's why we see, the, we, we, you know, he, he's flooded the earth once and it's not going to be flooded again. And, and people are not going to get flooded out because there are Christian people in, those, in the Pacific nations. Wouldn't they be praying? Wouldn't God provide for them? Why would he go and flood them out and make them go from one island to another? It doesn't make sense. But I believe, because with the fellow Ivan that at our church, he said to me that uranium lasts, it, it, has, a, it has a shelf life of um, 300 million years. Now, what he doesn't realise, where does that say in the Bible? Does the Bible say that there are millions of years, in, 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 that, you know, that, that the earth is millions of years old? Does it say that? No, if we, if we go by the genealogies, we know that it's about 6,000 years old. So it can't be older. So that to, for, for me, that fella, I think he, he, he is one of those um, theistic evolutionists, those that believe that God, the first 11 chapters of, of the Bible are wrong and, and, and that God did use millions of years. Look, God is outside of time. And when we get to heaven, there's going to be no time there because we're not going to know there's a time. The only reason why we know there's a time is because of the sun. But who put the sun there? Who sustains the sun? Doesn't the son of God sustain the sun? So should we be worshipping him who's blessed this country or should we go say, oh, like I said with the Aboriginal flag, does the sun provide for everything? And that's where I believe that we could be falling to that way of worshipping the sun. And I, I think that Australians um, need to be aware of that because our, our children are being taught these things.
things in, in, in the schools and that. This woke mob and, you know, they, they're teaching our children to be um, more environmentally friendly. And that's a good thing. Look, you know, I don't, I don't mind that you, know, you keep the country clean and that, but, you know, not, you know, not to worship it and think that, you, that um, we are, you know, that we can save the world. We can't save the world. That's God's world, isn't it? And one day, you know, he's going to make a new heaven and earth. So, you know, whatever happens in this world, you know, God's going to make it, you know, he's going to, it says in the Bible, he's going to make a new heavens and new earth. So that, as Christians, this is where we can start getting sidetracked from, from, from worshipping God. And I don't know, like I said, if I don't know everything. That's only just my opinion. I could, look, I, I could be wrong about that, but... I believe that, you know, w what we see of other countries that have worshipped the sun, the Egyptians, we'll look, look at that in the Egyptian Empire. The Japanese worshipped the sun, the Mayans and the Incas, they all worshipped the sun, but look at them. Look at those, what happened to those civilizations. They think that there is something about, there is something about the sun. Yeah, it does give life, it, war it, it warms the earth, but, you know, God created everything. But he said, don't worship what I've created. He, he, he wants us to worship him and worship his son. But if we start thinking about worshipping the son that God created, well, that's, you know, we are going to be in trouble there. And I believe that, you know, Christians are under it. You know, you know this country is, is under attack, I believe, and we are under attack from the Chinese, but... Look, you know, they're a great nation, they're a big nation, but, you know, if we always go back to the Bible, you know, uh, you know David and Goliath, well, if, if we are trusting in God, and look, as I said, you know, with the, with the Aboriginal flag, at home, there was a flagpole that, uh, that is at our place down there. Now, I don't fly the Aboriginal flag, because when I grew up, they used to raise the flag every morning on Monday and we used to, you know, we used to sing God Save Our Gracious Queen. And that's why I only worship, because I've shared this with the Aboriginal men in the prisons there about the Aboriginal flag and the Australian flag. The Australian flag, we should be only flying under one flag because when we see the Union Jack in the corner, that's about union. Aboriginal people, you know, they want to talk about reconciliation, bringing, bringing peoples together. It has to be... A, under one flag. And what's the main thing on the Australian flag? The Southern Cross. The, the Southern, the, uh, you know, the Southern Cross. It is only through the, through the forgiveness of our sins that you know, Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins that this country can be brought together. That's why we should not, there should not be an Aboriginal flag there. There should not be an Aboriginal flag because it is dividing the country. It is dividing the country, and it shouldn't be. As, as a country, we should only fly under one flag. And because the Southern Cross is on there, and there is a story there. As I think I've shared before, Aboriginal people don't have a story about the Southern Cross. There's, you know, there's no, real, there's no story about the Southern Cross, why it's up there. They can't explain it. Because it's something that... Because I think I've shared before, what I, that the last time the Southern Cross was, was in the was seen was in the northern hemisphere. Now then, when the Portuguese and the Spanish started exploring the, exploring the globe, when they crossed over the equator and started coming south in, 16, in, the, in the 1600s, they actually saw the Southern Cross down, down in the southern hemisphere. Now, it, now it's like God saying, remember me and my son. Because people say that Aboriginal people, we are the oldest living culture in the world. They keep saying that. Are we the oldest living culture in the world? No. Because if we go back to the Bible, we would have had to come from Babel and travel down here. And, we, and the time we got down here, well, they, that's why they wouldn't have had a story for the Southern Cross. If they would have been here 40,000 years, well, the Southern Cross wasn't there. Well, that's all, if I go by the Bible... Well, the world, you know, the world wasn't even there 40,000 years ago. You know, God was up in heaven in 40,000 years ago and longer, but forever, but not on this earth. 
So Aboriginal people, that's what I said, people say Aboriginal people have been here 40,000 years. We haven't been. We have been made in God's image and we were, we were created intelligent from, from Adam. We were created then and we made our way down here to this country. But for this country, we, Aboriginal people, and I've shared that before, we actually worship the, they worship the, 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 the rainbow serpent. They worship the rainbow serpent. If you, with, with NAIDOC week last year, they have a competition and they get somebody to paint up, a, all these Aboriginal mob to paint up the poster for NAIDOC week. The poster for this year won it, that won it, it was a big serpent in the shape of Australia. You, if you Google it, you go, to, you go to the poster for NAIDOC week 2021, you'll see that poster and it's, a, it's, in the, it's, it's Australia in the shape of a big serpent. You can see where, where this country is going when they start doing that and it's not good because people need to be warned about it and that's why, that's why I'm bringing it up so that you can sort of help me too because I want to warn people about worshipping the flag and you know, about what, putting Aboriginal people back that far because they're trying to connect us up to apes and that because they say, you've been here that long time. Well, you must have come from apes. You came from Africa, but we didn't. We came from the Middle East somewhere, Babel. So if we stick by our word from the start to the finish, we can't go wrong. And we have a world out there that's turning away from God, turning away from God. What are they teaching us in, in, in schools these days, the, the children in school these days? That you can be Arthur or Martha or Martha can be Arthur and things like that? You know what I mean? All this... Just, you can be what you want to be. But God, when he created man and woman, well, he created them differently, didn't he? He created Adam and he took the rib out. He took the rib out, but the rib grew back. We haven't got one less rib, us blokes. You know, you know God made that rib there. He, he, the, he took the rib out, made Eve, and the rib grew back. Well, when they want to do bone grafting, they, t- they can take a rib from there or from the hip. And they'll put it in there where your broken bone is, and, then, and that can grow, and that's a, your bones healed again. But we need to stick with the Bible, and and you know, God in His wisdom, He created chromosomes. So, you know, and with our chromosomes, the men, I think, it's, the men have uh, is XX, I think. Uh, what's it? the man? Yeah, that's so. So the man XY, so. God would have taken the X out of the man and doubled that to make the woman. Isn't that right? So that's why people, you know, when the world this day says that anybody can be what they want to be, they can have these sex change and that, like Bruce Jenner, you know, to be that um, Olympic champion. Now it's Caitlyn Jenner. But he will always be a man because of his chromosomes, un- un- unless they can take the chromosomes out, yeah, but they can't. That's how God created it. And that's how... D- that's how people are being deceived this way. And our children, like if you, you know, with your, some of your parents now, you know, you're better off probably homeschooling your children. And, you know, I don't know what the Christian schools are like these days. You know, because that's where Satan's going to attack the Christian schools. And, 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 if, and if, if the Christian teachers are not in the word, that, you know, they can be see, you know, deceived into, in, in, into the ways of the world, trying to put, you know, put the ways of the world together with the Bible. It, it can't happen. And you're not trying to please Aboriginal people. But, that, but Aboriginal people, they need to know the truth and the truth is from the word. You know? And, and if we're not there to teach it, you know, it, it was grateful that, you know, like Mr. Patamore, coming all that way from New South Wales to go to Borrelula out in the Gulf there, and he taught them how to read and write from the Bible. That's the only way you're going to learn. That's, you know, that's the only way, I, you know, for the, and Aboriginal people need to know about the Bible. But if, but if the Bible is pushed out and if, and, if, and if Aboriginal children are not being taught, taught these things, well, and, and children are going, that's why we want to get down there to our grandchildren to teach them that because that's what they're teaching them in the schools, evolution and that. They don't have the nativity play at the school there. When Easter comes, nothing is said about Jesus dying on the cross. And Christian, Christmas time, nothing said about Jesus. And that's where we... You know, we feel that we had to go down there so that we can teach our grandchildren. I hope that, you know, you're doing it too because 
because their children are, you know, they're the ones they're going to target. Because if they said, if, if you can get them before they're four years old and that, that, I think that's what Lenin said or one of the communist leaders said, that they can train up in children and, you know, they teach them about communism. And, and that's all they know, they've been brainwashed. But if we, we go by the word, we know we can put our children on a, they can, when they get into difficult, difficulties later in life, they know they can turn back to the word. It was like me, you know, I, I came to the church here, Sunday school and that, but I drifted away, but I still knew that, you know, that there was a God, that there was a God. And, if, and that's something I can turn back, and God can use me, and like he has used me, and he's opened my eyes a bit more, and look, I'm, I'm, I'm a work in progress. Like I said, I struggle up here when I preach, you know, I, I, I struggled at times, you're cheering and that. Even with this here, it's sort of been a bit of a struggle on that. But, you know, look, God wants, this is how God can use me. You know, he can, he can slowly work in me, make me and mould me. Here's the potter and I'm the clay. And, 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 and we're all clay. And he's making us and moulding us into the person that he wants us to be. And I can only do that by, by reading his word every day and praying. But that's the only thing that gets, you know, gets me going in the, in the morning. I get up and I pray. Even though it's cold, I read and I pray because I want to give thanks to God. I give thanks to him, you know. I give thanks to I say to when I wake up, I, you know, God has been, I, I thank you, Lord, for answering prayers during the night on every, all around the world. And you know how I like sunrises? You've ever seen the sunrise and sunsets I've been sending through? I thank God. I say, God, thank you for, for painting up sunrises, blessing people in the east and and in the other side of the world, he's blessing them with sunsets. Give praise to the Lord. Give him all the glory. And, you know, that's one way of me giving thanks to him and, Lord, that he can use me because I struggle at times, eh? I struggle at times, you know? But, you know, Lord, help me because I'm, I'm weak, you know what I mean? I am weak. We all are weak, but with the Lord, he, he can give me that strength to go on. And being down there, well, he, he gets me through. And... He can only, oh, I can only do what he wants me to do. And sometimes I think that, I don't know if, if what I've just shared here, if it's the right thing or the wrong thing, I don't know. But, you know, if someone, you know, the pastor can fill me in later if I've, and hopefully he does, he can, he can share with me to see if I've been on the right track or not. Or any of you, do you know what I mean? Tell me if I'm wrong, you know what I mean? I, don't, I'm, I haven't been to Bible college or anything. I've only learned from our pastor here. So, you know, we can all learn and we can all grow slowly, but don't, you know, I don't go out there sharing. And I'm not, only now and then I, I do it, you know, share here or share there. I ask Lord, Lord, should I witness to that person or not? I have to pray about it because I can, you know, go out there and I can be Bible bashing too. So, you know, look at your farmers. You live on this land and all the crops, you know, you've got the crops there and, you know, God blessing you and you don't give thanks to him. I feel that we've gone down there and, you know, the, the harvest, like, with this whole world, you know, the harvest is ready, but the labourers are so few. Are we going to be willing just to share here or share there in our workplace? And that's all God wants us to do. It's only a little bit. He, he'll do the rest. All we have to do is, you know, sow the seed. That's what he wants us to do. Share, share with people. Because this, this world is getting darker and darker. And the evil that's in this world, you know, like, with me, one thing about God, I'll tell you, I do didgeridoos. You might know I do didgeridoos. And you know the story behind the didgeridoo. It's a phallic symbol. It's, about a, it's an Aboriginal Dreamtime story about a man's... It's, it's a sexual addiction. That's why the women don't play it. They don't, the, the, it's a phallic symbol. But when I paint on my didgeridoo, I paint a fish on there, a Jewfish, in the ictus symbol. I don't know if you know the ictus symbol. Okay, I, I was going to bring my didgeridoo and show you, but I paint on my didgeridoo as a Jewfish because why a Jewfish? Because it's a fish that's caught in Darwin Harbour and we love it. But because the Jew, who was a Jew? Jesus. And then if I explain why the art style I do, there's a story in there, which is saying the ICTA symbol is, the acronym is, 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 is the five symbols, and I incorporate it into my, 
in, in, into my artwork. So when you see the fish, you'll see these lines and everything, but there's a, there's a story inside there. And the ICTUS is, the, five, the acronym is Jesus Christ of God, Son, Saviour. So with this day and age, with the sexual revolution, a lot of men are being addicted to pornography. And no doubt, Christians will be on the attack. Christians will be on the attack, Christian men. So, you know, with the amount of pornography now, you can, you can get your iPhones and you can look at all the pornography you want. And men get caught up in it. We, we are weak to that things, just pornography and sex and things. We are weak at it. And that's why I try and, with my didgeridoos, God has given me that gift. And I've shared before, when I was a tour guide, I could not play the didgeridoo. When I finished becoming a tour guide and I became a Christian, then... God gave me the gift to play the didgeridoo. And the, then I found out the story to the didgeridoo. So that's my witnessing tool. That's why I've... And because down there, I can get didgeridoos down there, but I don't want to step on their mom's toes down there. So I... The Larrakia men, we are the only mob that use bamboo. We only use bamboo. Now, I took some bamboo from down here, from, from up here down there. And I wanted some more bamboo. Now... I'm in an area that's a weed pile. It's a dry area. Now, you see the, you see the bamboo at Kamali Creek, eh? That type of bamboo. We're driving in the truck to go to one place to drop off tarpaulins because there's these massive tarpaulins and they use the tarpaulins to, you know, to cover up all the grain and then they, and then they pump the uh, bins with uh, pesticide. But, but these tarpaulins are 40 by 80 and they're massive and they, they weigh half a ton and we might take about 50 of them to get fixed up at a place. So... As we were driving through this place, and there's a wheat bin there, we're driving through this little town. It's called Shackleton, and I should have taken a photo. It's the smallest post office in Australia. It's about the size of a toilet. But in that town, as we were driving through, I looked, and I saw bamboo growing. And I, so we went down, we come back, and then, because we, we, we were going past that place a couple of times, and I decided to we pull up in the truck there. And I went over that bloke, and, I, and that's bamboo that grows like it's grown at Kamali Creek. And I went and met the bloke, and I said, hey, mate, can I get some of your bamboo? He said, take as much as you want. Now, God has provided me with bamboos out in the middle of nowhere. Bamboo, mind you, like it's grown here. And I said to that bloke, where did you get it from? And he reckoned he pinched it from the Perth Botanical Gardens, and it's been grown for about 10 years. And he said, if you put big mob water to it, and, and Kirsty and I went there, and I went and I, and I can go back there and get as much bamboo as I want. But like I said, it, it's a witnessing tool. And, you know, I'm hopefully trying to yeah, sell some bamboo and that, and sell some did you do's and paint them up. And, but the main thing is the story for it and the paintings on there. So, you know, that's something God has given me a gift there. And it's a, it's a witnessing tool because. Like everything in Australia, it's about Aboriginal now. It's all about Aboriginal, but they really don't know the story about the bamboo. And about the did you do, and also, just remind you about the, uh, you know, about the Australian flag, the Aboriginal flag. We need to know about these things. So, you know, just to you know, train up our kids in that. Because, you know, there's only one son that we worship, and that is the Son of God. And... I'll wind it up there. I'll just have a word of prayer. Father, thank God. I, Lord, thank you that I was able to come and share. And Lord, you know, I struggle. And thank you that I can just share here. <coughs> come back to this place that has blessed me for the prayers <coughs> for the brothers and sisters here. Lord, thank you for <coughs> the past. He has taught me so much. And Lord, we all got, he's got a gift and I've got a gift, but sometimes my gift, I think, oh, Lord, it's all over the place. And, but Lord, let's pray that I can, the gifts that I have, that I can bring glory to your name because you are my provider. You are the one that sustains me. <coughs> Lord, you sustain this whole world. It's your creation. You are in control. And the sun that is up there in the sky, it is your sun that sustains it. And you give life to this world, Father God, as only you could. And Lord, what I've shared here, I pray that it's helped for, for the brothers and sisters here to 
have a bit more understanding, but help them to focus back to you and your word and to continue on in the prayers. Thank you, thank you we can have that relationship with you because of the finished work of your son Jesus Christ dying on the cross for us. Lord, thank you that we can be reminded in this country about the cross, the southern cross that's on our flag, Australian flag on the Northern Territory flag, Father God. Help us to stay focused on that. Lord, as we go through this difficult times of COVID, Lord, I thank you for preachers, Lord, for M.A. Butler 20 years ago preached about pharmacists, pharmaceuticals, and we see it present here today, Lord. And may we as Christians help to stay focused on you, Lord, because we can get carried away by the world and get fearful, thinking that this COVID is going to kill everybody. And Lord, we just thank you that when we, as Christians, when we die, we're going to go to a better place. We know that you're going, your son is going to come back soon. Lord, help us to be that shining light for you, be out there witnessing in a dark world, Father God. Pray for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, um, what's the next song there? Yeah, as I... Al might be here, but M.A. Butler. Everybody remember M.A. Butler, the, the American pastor that came here? He, 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 he wrote for um, Herald of Hope. And he actually preached on pharmacists, and the pharmacist is a Greek word <coughs> for pharmaceuticals or chemist. And he was talking about, about how it was going to affect the world. And look what's happening today. Everybody needs to get the jab, and you know, you better have the jab because you might die, and you know, you're going you're to save the world, and you might save, you know, somebody might die from the virus and things like that. But interesting times. But anyway, I hand it over to the pastor, sorry.